does Life of Pi and Fences have in common? People said both movies would be unfilmable. They were both wrong in this bitch. your boy brass tats in this bitch you already know you already know the subscribers you know i love you guys new subscribers welcome this is going to be in three steps number one i'm going to talk about the movie spoiler free where i will tell you what i thought about the movie whether it's worth watching what have you number two i will talk about the transfer in where i will go balls deep in this bitch and give you the most comprehensive review on a transfer there is on youtube let's just keep it real that's what happens around here. Number three, I'll give you my final thoughts whether I feel you should pick it up, whether you shouldn't. It's pretty straightforward. People said this movie could never be on film. Ang Lee took that as a challenge in this bitch. So the movie got made and two things could happen. Either it's going to be very exciting and interesting or it's going to be boring as a motherfucker. Which one was it? Let's find out. So this is a story narrated by the older Pi. The main movie itself is a flashback of sorts. He's, well, he's telling a story. When him and his family were moving from India to Canada, I believe, and shit happened, it left Pi on a boat with a few animals, one of which is a tiger in this bitch. Everything a tiger looks like says to you, leave me the fuck alone. Do you know what I'm saying? If tigers are not fucked up enough, this tiger's name, Yes, this motherfucker has a name. Tiger is named Richard Parker in this bitch. The tiger has got a name. He's even more dangerous in this bitch. Very clever, actually, adding a name to an animal gives it more personality. Not that the tiger doesn't have personality enough, some scary shit. Now, obviously, we know Pi makes it because Pi is narrating the story by Efron Khan, fantastic actor. It's not about how he gets to where he gets to. It's about the journey from how it starts to how it ends up. I had it on 3D for a while, and I don't know why I didn't watch it, because I was just thinking, okay, you know what? I guess I've got to be in the right mood for it. I was never ready for it. I kept putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. We had a huge family split. It was a nasty, it was like World War Three. Our families were just going on some crazy shit. And I remember I just needed to step away from the situation and just chill. And I thought, right, let me just put this on, stuck 3D glasses on and was motherfucking blown away. This movie is really everything you want a movie to be. I know I use the word fantastic a lot, which it is, but it's just thought provoking. You feel for the characters. I, it gives you, these, there's so many emotions. I watched that movie twice, then watched it again, invited my cousin round to watch it because he was putting it off pretty much for the same reasons I was putting it off. And I said to him, you gotta watch this. And look, let's just talk about the 3D for a second. The 3D is reference quality 3D of this movie. This is quite possibly one of the best 3D movies ever. It just helps and adds to the movie because the, the movie was shot with 3D in mind and just everything, the visual effects at that time, I've not seen anything. I literally thought they had a real tiger in that bitch. No, 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 no. They do have a real tiger in the movie, but most of the tiger is CGI. God damn. The CGI in this is mind-blowingly realistic. A1. You guys have to watch it. There's so much I could talk about this movie. I'm talking to you now about it. and I'm, There's so many things coming into my head, which I remember about it. And I just got to say, you have to watch it. Just watch it. Seriously. Take my word for it. Highly recommend it. Life of Pi. Shot in 2.8K. Visual effects rendered at 2k digital intermediate 2k upscaled to 4k dts master audio 7.1 so how's the transfer the transfer is pretty good it's pretty good it's one of the best of the first wave of 4k blu-rays introduced it's a nice introduction to blu-ray the real winner of this disc is the hdr because there are certain scenes which really capitalize on it when you're out at the sea and you've got the sun glowing off the ocean looks gorgeous the hdr is almost blinding yeah it's that good you got other scenes where they're in india there's boats with lanterns on them and it just really stands out give it gives it a, a three-dimensional feel another scene is the whale god damn looks beautiful now in terms of detail there is an uptick in detail it is noticeable 
in parts. At the beginning where, they, where a younger Pi is talking with his friend and you see they're, they're out in the forest, you see, you see all that greenery. Well, this movie has a lot of greenery, but there's some greenery at the beginning and you can really see added depth to it and more detail than you would have seen in the 1080p. There is a wider color space. It's noticeable in certain scenes. It's not noticeable overall, but when it does show up, it looks beautiful. Specifically the whale scene, certain things in the ocean, you know, you notice the different color, the more richer color. It's vibrant while maintaining natural skin tones and what have you. The tiger still looks really good, even with the upscale, surprisingly. But there are other scenes in the movie where you can see a little imperfection, but that little imperfection is minute. It's nothing major. So it's not gonna ruin your enjoyment in the movie. Black levels are pretty good, not stellar, pretty good. Some very nice showcase moments. Now, when 4K with HDR was first introduced, you would probably go to a store, to the mall, whatever, and see parts of this movie on the demo, along with Exodus and what have you. And it looked beautiful, right? That's how beautiful it looks. It doesn't look as good as some of the others I've seen released at the same time. Example, Exodus. But it still holds its own. It's a good transfer. And right now, it's pretty cheap everywhere. Definitely worth the pickup. 100%. When 4K with HDR was first introduced, you would probably go to a store, to the mall, whatever, and see parts of this movie on the demo, along with Exodus and what have you. And it looked beautiful, right? That's how beautiful it looks. It doesn't look as good as some of the others I've seen released at the same time. Example, Exodus. But it still holds its own. It's a good transfer. And right now, it's pretty cheap everywhere. Definitely worth the pickup. 100%. Do I give it the brass tack seal of approval? No. The best version of this movie, in my opinion, is the 3D version. By quite some margin. It wasn't a better experience than the 3D. The 3D was immersive in, in every single way. And the 3D is a stellar transfer as well. You can tell that it was actually shot in 3D with 3D in mind. For those of you who aren't interested in 3D, then the 4K one is the way to go, 100%. It is a, a nice step up from the 1080p. But in terms of the movie itself, I would still pick the 3D over this every time. I love 3D. Those of you who don't, you're gonna love the 4K. So in that respect, I highly, highly recommend it. Beautiful movie, beautiful transfer. You can't go wrong. It's a lot cheaper now than it was when you pick it up, so it's a win-win anyway. Even if it was full price, it's still a win-win. This is one of my favorite movies of all time. It's a noticeable step up in terms of the, the color specifically. The detail is a step up, but the HDR is the real winner here, and you really can't go wrong with this movie on any front. Highly recommend it. Go pick it up. It's the one. Hope you enjoyed the review. Going retro. Going to do some more older titles for you guys. Please hit the subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. There's tons more of this shit coming out. All right, guys. Take care of yourselves.